What's going on guys, it's Brandon again, and we are going to be taking a look at carrier landings today. I noticed that a lot of people still struggle with approaching and landing on a carrier. So today I aim to fix this. We are going to start off by looking at the SBD Dauntless. It's the US Navy dive bomber that I recommend that you start training with. So let's go ahead and just take a look at how I approach the carrier landings. So what you're going to want to do is just when you're, say if you're practicing for this, I recommend that you go into custom battles and just go ahead and set up a little custom battle for you and some friends or just by yourself if you want to. Go ahead and drop your bomb load after you take off the flight deck and what you're going to want to do is go ahead and turn around and start heading back the other way and line yourself up to the right or the left of the carrier depending on how you want to approach this and make sure that you're kind of going parallel to it. Now what you're going to want to do is, before you go into your turn, your approach, go ahead and set your flap to combat and drop your throttle to around 50 to 60 percent. And then go ahead and square off your landing approach, start heading east, and then go ahead and take your left, and then drop your landing gear. Now also when you do this, you're going to want to make sure that you're maybe around, I don't know, 300 meters out of it, and then go ahead and cut your throttle to zero percent. Now when you do this, you're going to want to try to pull up your nose a bit and just keep it into a glide so you, you kind of just gently go onto the landing of the fly deck. You just kind of slope right on in there. And there you go, gravity will take care of the rest. Make sure that your tow cable grabs the uh, resting cables on the fly deck. This is the most important part or else you're just going to end up overshooting it and you'll probably have to rely on your machine gun to slow you down. Let's go ahead and take a, a look at another clip here. Okay guys, here's a look at another plane. This is the TBF Avenger, just an overgrown version of the SBD Dauntless. And this thing has basically the same characteristics. Now the only thing that's different about this one is it's a bit overgrown. And when it hits down the carrier, it has a tendency to bounce. So this is something you want to kind of prevent. It's something that I almost mess up right here, as you can see. I come down a bit hard right now. And the plane starts to bounce, but luckily I was low enough to where the tow cable latched onto the resting cables and basically brought me down. But if you saw that wobble right there, that was kind of lucked out. I'm lucky that my landing gear didn't shut down on me. So let's take a look at another video. Okay, so this plane here is the F-2A3 Buffalo Tier 2 U.S. Navy fighter. Now, when coming in for a landing with these, I recommend going at around 170 kilometers and stay at an altitude of around, let's say, 28 meters. To simplify things for here for you guys, the carriers sit 18 meters off the water. So if you can be going, say, 18 meters off the water and you're carrying a speed of about 170 kilometers, then that's ideal for landings. Okay guys, now we're going to be taking a look at the Wildcat. This is also a Navy fighter, and with most of these fighters, I know what you want to do when you come in for landings. I mainly notice this in the Wildcat, the Hellcat, and the Corsair, that you want to be maintaining a speed around 160 to 170 kilometers, because anywhere beyond, or I mean below there, for that matter, you're just going to end up smashing right into the flight deck. As you can see here, I dropped below 160 kilometers, and I smashed into it. I'm lucky I didn't crash, but I just kind of got a bounce there, and my tow cable ended up catching it. So, we'll go ahead and take a look at the Hellcat now and see how it compares to this. Okay guys, now for the Hellcat. The Hellcat is very similar to the Wildcat, but the speed that I recommend that you range from when coming in for a carrier landing with the Hellcat is around 150 to 170. I know it's a wide range right there from the other planes, such as 150 to 160, but the reason why I say this is you can either land this plane really fast or it's slower than what you really want to, and anything below 150 I don't recommend because again you'll just go ahead and slam down the fly deck as you see I had to kind of power up right there. But another good landing with the Hellcat. So let's go ahead and go over to the trickiest plane that I had to land on the carrier and I had to learn, that is the Corsair. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. Okay guys, now let's go ahead and take a look at the Corsair 1C. This is one plane that I recommend that you practice with a lot because this plane has a lot of fluctuation in power, and the stalling point for this thing is about 170 kilometers. So when landing, I recommend that you land at around 180 to 190 kilometers an hour, and you kind of overshoot the runway when you do this. As you can see, I do it right here. I kind of overshoot, then I land. Because it's a plane, if you end up stalling out, you're really not going to recover from it anytime soon. You're just going to end up in the water, so that's what I recommend for that. So let's go ahead and take a look at the Bearcat now. 
Okay, guys, now we're taking a look at the level 16 Bearcat. Now, for this Bearcat, I do recommend landing at any speed with it. About 220 kilometers and blows about all right. I mean, this thing, this thing's tow cable with the landing gear corresponds really well, so you can basically land at just about any speed with this, which which is acceptable, I might add. Now, I kind of got a shitty angle right here, but as you can see, I come in for a perfect landing. And it all worked out pretty well. Really great plane, easy plane to land on a runway, or a flight deck, I mean. So why don't you go ahead and give this one a try if you can, and now we'll go ahead and take a look at our last plane, the Panther. Okay, guys, I'm going to be taking a look at the Panther. It is my favorite plane to land on a flight deck. It's actually one of the easiest, I might add, in my opinion, because of the way it's just so flat. It's got basically tricycle landing gear like the Liberator does, and it lands really, really easily. So what you're going to want to do is put down your air brakes, your landing flaps, and reduce your speed to around 300 kilometers. Now 300 kilometers and below is an acceptable landing speed for this. You may come in a bit hot with it, but it's acceptable. And anything around 240, 230 makes the landing perfect, as you can see there. So that's how I land with the Panther and all the rest of my Navy planes. And I'll throw in kind of a bonus clip for you, for you guys here. Watch this. Now, I know landing on a carrier with a panther is one thing, but a lot of people also have trouble taking off with a panther on the carrier. So what you're going to want to do after you land is go down to the end of the carrier and turn around using your flaps, gain some speed, and turn around really fast. You know, the faster you go, it's easier to turn around, but don't, don't carry too much speed. Now start heading back towards the end of the other side of the carrier. And what you're going to want to do is just, just maintain a solid speed, a good speed. And once you get past this little line right here, start letting off and drop your uh, your air brakes. And then you're going to want to use the flaps to turn this thing around really fast. And you want to make sure that you at least stay behind this white line right here. I kind of went over it, but that's okay. Then you're going to want to put your flaps to raise and you want to go full throttle. Now this is the point of no return. This is where you're either going to make it or you're going to fail. Now put your flaps to raise, put down, I know it's going to sound weird, but put down your air brakes and then start jerking back on your joystick or whatever you're using. And there you go, that's how you land on a carrier with a panther. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video on carrier landings. I know this was only the U.S. tree, so maybe one of these days I'll throw in a Japanese carrier landing video or something like that. But I hope you guys enjoyed, and I hope you enjoyed this little extra clip right here. This is one I got uh, about a month back, probably. I was just flying my ME-163 all shot to shit, and guess what? I see the carrier, and I make it, and I come in for a landing. So, hope you guys enjoyed, and you know what, guys? Just have a nice day.